Okay, awesome. So good morning, everybody. And uh, we are going to be talking about finally getting into our CS2 art module and talking a lot about uh, uh, this stuff that just really makes me giddy and happy because this is kind of where math and art combined. This is actually one of my uh, first capstone theses that I was working on, but I, I never really got a chance to, to really dive into it more. Uh, but it's nice to see that the CMU CS Academy has kind of broached this topic uh, by using their uh, graphics package that they've built into this new uh, into this new uh, program uh, that we're using uh, to kind of teach you uh, game programming, which which I, I'm just really excited to to dive into this stuff because this is uh, where a lot of my passions meet together. Uh, but so some of these things that we're going to actually be covering in this this art module to, to kind of start off uh, we're going to be revisiting color again uh, but but as you can see here there there's a few other things that will be coming up too which is kind of cool uh, so uh, right here they have this uh, patterns thing uh, which which is actually really cool uh, but this is just showing you kind of how uh, they're taking uh, monochromatic colors well this is more uh, probably more of an analogous uh, but th this is just showing you uh, uh, like a like almost it gives you like a stained glass feel and, and vibe uh, as it, it's kind of a uh, striding out and everything uh, but they also are going to be going into patterns as well uh, and just making uh, geometric patterns and stuff like that uh, and and then uh, also emergent behavior where um, uh, a lot of you might play those IO games where it's uh, just taking generative code uh, and it, it's kind of giving it a simulation of a an artificial intelligence to a, a certain degree uh, but kind of a, even talking more about some of that stuff uh, before I jump into color um, is is kind of a, a interesting topic uh, so I wanted to show you a few things uh, because it's going to be kind of cool as we go into all this stuff uh, but I just wanted to show you a little bit more about uh, pattern making a big thing uh, has, as it kind of combines with uh, um, geometric shapes and everything is uh, if if this is stuff that really interests you um, one of my personal favorite artists uh, he was a he was uh, basically an individual that did a lot of uh, etch moldings uh, kind of like the the foundation of of forced uh, forced perspectives and surrealism uh, but one of the big things that he also did, uh, Moritz, uh, um, Moritz Cornelius Escher or MC Escher, uh, did a thing called tessellations a lot of times, uh, and it's basically taking kind of patterns and building them out uh, to where it just like multiple iterations to where it like creates a pattern uh, with images, uh, and then he would take these images, mold them into geometric shapes to to kind of create a pattern. And he did this a lot, a lot of different things that he did. Uh, it's based a lot of uh, off uh, geometric shapes. So another thing that that uh, might be talked about a lot in this pattern making and stuff like that is also the uh, sacred geometry. Sacred geometry is kind of come some cool stuff. Uh, but a lot of times in art theory, uh, as well as just like anything that that we actually build out, uh, you'll hear about the. Uh, uh, the golden ratio or the sacred ratio and this is kind of a, a, a pattern that actually gets built out uh, and, it, and it's a it, it's a varied ratio but uh, this happens a lot of times in in nature itself uh, so like uh, the conch that you see like sitting on a, on a seashore and everything uh, it's actually built off uh, off the golden ratio uh, of, of common uh, so so you'll also hear uh, talk of of just kind of uh, normal shapes and everything there's the Vitruvian man uh, that that uh, that Leonardo da Vinci talks about because it's actually based off like the human form of how how uh, patterns are actually forced and made so just a little bit about that uh, if you want to look into more of that stuff because it's something that interests you 
I definitely look up like uh, MC Escher, Tessellations, uh, right here, uh, Tessellations, MC Escher, and, uh, and Sacred Geometry. Sacred Geometry is the other thing right there. Uh, but now let's jump back into color itself because uh, uh, that's the, the main part of what I'm going to be talking about here. So, so now uh, one thing, uh, especially uh, here in the CMU CS Academy itself, is um, we need to basically start talking a little bit more about color because when you actually create uh, something in in uh, in coding, uh, and you're trying to create maybe like an image or something like that. You also want to be able to build out a color palette that that is just not random colors thrown on the screen. Um, you want to be able to have some uh, some color that is a uh, that that's interesting, but it also automatically it is easier on the eye uh, because. Uh, as you as you use colors in something, uh, certain colors will clash uh, unless you actually build a viable color palette to them uh, to to where it actually makes uh, it makes it a little bit easier to see. And and as you can see that they they talk about this like like if you're just randomly grabbing colors, sometimes it really just clashes. And yeah, it's it's okay to eyeball it, but. This stuff actually is based off math too, uh, to where you can actually create a lot of your colors off, off math. Uh, so one of the first things that we talk about is is having a monochromatic color palette. And, and monochromatic itself is basically just having one set color and then every color off that is built off an exact ratio of that color. And one way that we can actually easily see this is is so right here if you're looking at this code right here this is this is where i'm pointing to right here uh, so uh, besides using the preset string values that we actually have in cmu cs academy you can always use your three color channels your, your red your green your blue and you can actually uh, map out a color like that so once you pick a, a given color your your rgb uh, and then you actually put uh, that down anything that is a direct ratio to that RGB is actually uh, monochromatic along it uh, so quickly I'm going to jump to this part right here and show you something that's, that's kind of interesting uh, so so one thing that they already have built out here is uh, they have a red slider which automatically is is messing with the red channel uh, they have the green slider which is messing with the green channel and they have this blue slider that's messing with the the blue channel and uh, I think I've talked about this before but each of these can be set from 0 to 255 which means 256 possibilities so if we're talking about 256 possibilities on each of these three channels uh, it it basically gives us a full range of I think it's like a, a little bit over 61,000 colors here actually let's do a quick calculation I'll pull up the calculator here uh, so real time we can actually talk about this so pull up my little calculator and we're gonna say 256 times 256 times 256. Uh, I take that back. So it's 16 million point seven eight, uh, effectively. Uh, uh, 16 point seven eight million colors, uh, effectively, and that's the exact number right there. 16 point seven 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 point or 16. 16,777,216 possible color variations, okay? So, with that, uh, that means just basically everywhere that we, we put these sliders, there is a total possible over 16 million colors that we can actually create just here alone, uh, just using these sliders and, and going through this. So one thing that you might notice, though, is if we 
if we put each slider exactly at the same value, so let's say that I'm going to put them all at 136. So if they're all at 136, you notice that the color's gray. Okay? And that's what I was going to say about this whole kind of monochromatic ratio thing. So if you match all three channels all the way through, uh, from all, all the way at zero, all the way to the 255, if you just keep on matching them all the way through, that actually gives you your line of gray scales all the way through. Uh, because uh, when we're talking about the RGB scale, uh, this is actually what's called additive color, uh, because it's actually, it has light added to it, and that's why it's actually called additive color. So if we were to put all these channels all the way at 255, when you put as much red, as much green, and as much blue as possible, mixed together, it actually makes white. The vice, you know, when you're talking about pigment color, uh, it actually mixes to this like muddy, like it's not complete black, but it's like this, this gross like black look to it. Uh, but this, uh, when you're using additive color, when you mix all light, uh, red, your, your red channel, your green channel, and your blue channel together, it actually gives you uh, the, the color white. Uh, and then if you take it all away and you subtract everything out, that's what gives you black. So if we were to keep these matched all the way through, that would give us our full gray scale. Uh, so, so basically... Of those, uh, anytime you have them completely matched, all three channels completely matched in number, uh, it gives you your grayscale. And that, in a sense, is monochromatic because it actually goes through and they're all direct ratios of each other. So, uh, let's kind of, uh, we'll end up building on that in the project that I have set up for you guys uh, to where, remember that anytime you want to build monochromatic you're actually just doing a direct ratio of your red channel your green channel and your blue channel of the color that you've actually picked out uh, so you can actually build a palette off of that okay so so our next color scheme that, that we kind of talked about and this is less of a a color scheme more than just uh, this is more just an idea to understand that every color that you actually create it does actually have a complement to it in, in, in other words um, it's not like saying hey you're, you're you're looking good today and everything different type of compliment right uh, so so kind of in a sense of like even in like geometry how how angles have a complementary angle colors have a complementary color too uh, so so they basically match on the opposite sides of the color wheel itself. Uh, and, and the color wheel has also evolved to a certain degree because you might, uh, initially when you thought about the color wheel, a lot of times we also talked about pigment color where your primary colors were red, yellow, and blue, which it's a little bit different in actual digital color because we are still talking about those additive colors of the red, the green, and the blue channel, which is, when, which is a little bit different. And it does look different. Uh, so one online resource that you have, uh, this is a free resource. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go into Adobe, but you, you, can, actually, uh, you can actually pull these up yourself. Uh, Canva actually has a color wheel that's actually built online there. And it does have the different ways to actually look at all these different colors. So let's say we pick a random color. Uh, I pick this, this blue out here. And it's on if if I do this little drop down and everything, it will automatically give me its its complementary color. And you notice that that this purplish color uh, it gives me a green to it. Uh, if I pick a blue, it's kind of like an orange. Uh, if I pick a if I pick like this deeper green, it's it's this uh, it's kind of pinkish and so on and so forth. But it will automatically give me the the complementary color. As, as we do that. But it doesn't necessarily create a, a color palette because this is just two colors. Uh, so so usually when you're trying to generate a color palette you want at least three colors uh, so you can actually kind of build off that. Uh, so in the project you'll see that there's in the bonus 
I'm not having you do a complementary color. I'm having you do what's called a split complement. It's a it's a lesser known color palette, uh, only generated usually by mostly by artists, but it's it's actually a cool kind of color palette that you can actually create. Uh, so let's go back here to our discussion. Uh, but if you look here, uh, the way that you can actually uh, calculate your your complementary color in uh, the CMUCS Academy is if you get your RGB uh, that you've actually just uh, picked out yourself uh, and then you take 255 and you subtract each of your values uh, that you've picked for your RGB you can actually automatically calculate the uh, the complement of it uh, so so effectively it's like jumping at the the other end to actually get that so now uh, another color palette that we can actually build in in our in our CMUCS Academy is called a triadic and a triadic yes very very similar base stuff like the the Latin core of it tri being uh, like a three uh, just like a triangle that's exactly what it is you're 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 building an equilateral triangle on the color wheel itself and it's giving you that that triadic so the easiest way to do that is you pick your RGB uh, and then don't switch up the order but just shift it uh, so so these values that you pick for RGB you take that you take the green you move it over you take the 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 value that you put in the blue you move it to the green position and then you take the value of the, that you put in red and put it in the blue position and then you do that one more time you shift again don't switch the order just just uh, switch uh, switch which one comes first uh, and then it basically rotates around uh, so that will actually complete your full triadic uh, and then just like that uh, like even in your your canva you can actually do triadics as well so you can come down here and do a triadic so if I'm picking this one it automatically is giving me the triadic in here. So a few other things before we actually like jump to the project. So anytime we're picking this color, you see this value here that's popping up. And uh, this is something that I've actually talked about quite a bit. You'll see that it has uh, basically six characters uh, after this number sign right here that's actually being and what this actually is is it's uh, it's basically hex pair code that's actually coming out of it so so for your red channel uh, that's a DF for your green channel that's a two zero and then for your blue channel that's a five eight uh, but it's basically creating hex pairs uh, for each of the channels because that's actually how you can convert the 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 value that you actually see the zero the to the 250 uh, into a hex pair that that is actually showing as basically two two base 16 digits uh, so so it's basically just a a straight mathematical conversion uh, so the computers can actually communicate to each other and tell what color is actually being generated I can go further in depth in fact I did with a few of the students uh, when we were talking about I was talking about how 24-bit uh, color is actually generated off, off bits off the, the ones and zeros and how that code is actually generated so the computers can actually communicate that uh, so uh, I can go a little bit deeper into it uh, in, in a different discussion uh, but, it, but it's a little bit off topic uh, but it's Kind of interesting if if you if you're really into this stuff so uh, that next one is is uh, building a triadic as you can see it automatically no matter what it's creating that equilateral triangle uh, wherever we're moving this and it's actually creating the the triadic colors and then we're going to be doing the same thing in our CMU CS Academy but less of kind of like a balance just kind of uh, jumping through it and 
if you scroll down on this Canva one, you'll see that there's a few other ones that, that they actually talk about, like the analogous, uh, which is not just using your color that's monochrome, that, that, that would just be creating a monochromatic, whereas you're just in a single color and you're creating uh, a different, uh, different saturations of it. Uh, but in analogous, you're actually picking the colors off to the sides as well. And this is kind of similar to the concept of like a split complement because um, for a split complement instead of having this this uh, middle blue you would be using this opposite orange right here so the orange uh, and the split complement will be this darker blue and then the cyan right here uh, that would kind of be your split complement that you would actually be using almost like a triadic but not not quite like a triadic so there's a lot of the decent information on this too. Uh, it goes a little bit more into uh, uh, it, it. Here it says hue, saturation, and luminescence. Uh, but if you've seen, uh, if you've ever messed with Photoshop, you'll know that luminescence isn't uh, called luminescence in Photoshop. It's called brightness. So you'll see an HSB scale, uh, which, which is your, it, which is set up a little bit differently. So. So that that's kind of a interesting off note, uh, but but there's all various uh, similar discussions about all this digital color theory, uh, and and I can get a little bit more into it, uh, but it's a uh, definitely uh, definitely a lot of information online to where uh, uh, you can really deep dive into it if you want to. In fact, uh, I do have uh, this set up so I can actually show you this real quick. So, um, instead of having a color wheel anymore, well, they, they still do have a color wheel in Photoshop. But the, the color wheel of Photoshop no longer has your red, green, blue on it. It has the hue, saturation, brightness uh, set up on it. So it's harder to kind of translate this information using the color wheel in Photoshop, and that's why I don't really have it pulled up. Uh, but it is something that you can actually mess with uh, to where if you do pick, like let's say we pick uh, our color here, you can actually take that color and then go to your, your red, green, blue sliders, and then it's actually going to give you those red, green, blue channel colors uh, of what you want there. Uh, but uh, one thing that they've noticed that as they've evolved digital color theory, it's less of a color wheel. It's, it's more of like this this color block or color cube is what they kind of call it. Uh, and, and what you'll notice is like they talk about this hue cube that they got. So it's basically having colors and then slices uh, as, as it goes through. So, so it's... it's uh, so as you move this down, see how it has different colors. So it's effectively like a color cube as, as you're going through it. It's a three-dimensional shape and less of a two-dimensional wheel. So now that I've kind of droned on about color a bit, what I wanted to have set up for you is is I want to do this project uh, so it says like time for the project yay so if you look here um, in this area uh, what I want you to work on is the open project here so go into your 2.2.2 and in the open project we're gonna go in here and what I ended up doing is I, I wanted to create kind of like a template of things for y'all uh, and put this information in here. And I don't know if I was able to push the code to you. Um, if not, uh, I have it here. And I also have it saved on a document that I'm going to uh, uh, send to Miss Stevens. And, and hopefully uh, she, can, she can either... Uh, post it for you put it in Schoology I don't know how would be the best way to actually get this to you uh, but because if it didn't push through CMU CS Academy 
I mean, I can have it up here so you can actually look at the code. Uh, but ultimately, what I'm going to have you do is you're going to use this and you're just going to be replacing uh, the colors up here where you're, you're just going to be replacing your the Mono 1, Mono 2, Mono 3, uh, Triadic 1, Triadic 2, Triadic 3, and your bonus 1, 2, and 3 uh, as, as, you, as you create these colors. And so first of all, let's say that I want to do like a a different mono. Let's uh let's do like a an extreme red. So So if we do the extreme red, if we were doing monochromes off an extreme red, right, uh, anytime we do a ratio to zeros, they stay zero. So basically, I could put any number in that red channel and it would give me different reds under a, a monochrome. So looking at that, uh, we have this lighter red, or the brightest red, then we have a darker red, and then we have a really muted dark red. Uh, but that would be a monochromatic scale. Here, and let's, uh, let's not have it so dark. Let's, let's do this one at 220, and then we'll do this one at about 180. gives a little bit of variety. Okay. So now we have some uh, we have our, our reds being our little monochromatic that we have here. Now this next one uh, when we do our triadic remember whatever values you pick here initially Let's say 200, 10, 12. That's also going to be really red. I don't want it. Okay, let's do it the 200 here instead. We'll do 25 here. So. 25, 10, and 200. So since we have these three, the next one we want to do is we want to put the 10 in the first channel. We want to put the 200 in that next channel. And then we want to move the 25 to the back. And then lastly, we want to move the 200 all the way up. And then we want to put the 25 and the 10. And notice they're in this they're in this uh, in this particular order where 25 first, 10 next, and then 200, and then 10 because the 200th next and since the 25 was first it gets moved all the way to the back and then again the 200 and the 25 and 10 again uh, you don't want to switch up the order because then it gets weird so we'll run that and that actually creates a, a, a little bit of a triadic for us uh, and as you might notice red green and blue are definitely a triadic uh, because 
that's just the, the, the way it actually works. I mean, we can even show this on Canva uh, to where if we actually go on this, uh, this color wheel, we're picking our triadic. If I pick a very red one, say red, green, blue. Uh, is is basically how that triadic ends up. So this this last bonus one, this this one is is the the one that's a little bit different, and uh, and it's interesting how you can actually create this. Uh, but it, your split complement is basically taking one color having a complementary but instead of the complementary color you have uh, the analogous colors on both sides of the complementary color uh, so the way that you can actually calculate this is uh, what I've done here uh, the ones that I put in here is when I started with 71 uh, 186 and 183 uh, that gives us this kind of cyan color and then to create the split complements, you take the what you had placed in the green channel and then you put that in both uh, both the next uh, red channels for, for that you put that same number in both the next red channels and then you take what was in the red channel and you put it in the blue channel for one and you put it in the green channel for the other but the other number that you pick is not the 183 what you end up doing is you take 71 and 183 uh, so let's pull up our little calculator again let me show you how this is done so we take the 183 and then I subtract the 71 from that it gives me the value of 112 but then I divide that by 2 so then I have 56 so then with that 56 I either add it I either add it to the 71 or I subtract it from the 183 and that gives me 127 so with that 127 I place it uh, in the one that doesn't have a number yet so 127 so what I will do is I will generate a brand new one and then we will redo this so let's just come up with something new uh, let's do 27 152 and 251 Okay, so with uh, with what we did last time, uh, we're going to take the 152 and we're going to put it here. And we're going to put that here. And then we're going to take the 27 we're going to put it here and we're going to put it here and now what we need to do is with our calculator we're going to take 251 we're going to subtract 27 and then we're going to divide by 2 gives us 112 so then uh, 251 minus 112 equals 139 so we got to put 139 here we got to put 139 here we're going to run that and now we have our split complement that's been created so 
we have this kind of light blue and the split complement that's built off the light blue we kind of have this uh, sea green color and this purplish color uh, and they are the split complement to to this light blue that we got so uh, there we've created three new color palettes and these are my color palettes don't forget to switch out the name here uh, so you have your color palette there and then basically uh, once you get all that don't forget to submit it okay Uh, but that's basically what I want you to do today. Uh, so, uh, as as you will notice, you'll see me uh, uh, kind of a uh, kind of floating uh, because I am also in a classroom today as well. Uh, but uh, but definitely, if you have a question, uh, put it in the chat. I will try to touch base with you guys uh, to to help you get this done. Uh, and hopefully uh, Miss Stevens will be able to help you out as well uh, but right here uh, this is uh, this is what I want you to do just basically fill out this template so you can actually create uh, three color palettes you'll have a mon monochromatic a, uh, a triadic and a split complement that you've actually created out of this and just kind of the whole concept of this is being able to create color palettes that actually match up uh, uh, well enough uh, to where it gives you kind of a, a decent fill of things uh, so so you ha actually have some colors that you can work off of when you're actually generating a character or or some sort of design uh, in in a, in this art section that we're going to be working on now okay uh, well thank you for your time uh, as I said I will still be available uh, You'll notice that I have, I'll have headphones on. Uh, so uh, as we talk, uh, um, just let me know, uh, and I will, I will do my best to help everybody out and make sure that we get this completed. Uh, if we need a little bit more time, uh, we can always assess that as we go through the class. Thank you. all